So this is a Jeep Liberty turbo diesel and today we'll be doing a time belt job on it. So this video should be a quick how-to and give you the basic procedure about what to do. So on this vehicle in particular at 100,000 miles a time belt due for a change. Uh, if you fail to change the time belt and it either slips or breaks it can damage the rockers on the engine. When the rockers are damaged uh, they need to be replaced. They cost about $47 each. There's 16 of them. It's better than replacing an engine and it's better than having to do a valve job. So it's kind of nice that the rockers go. If the belt breaks it's usually not the end of the world but at the same time a belt's pretty cheap compared to almost $800 and just the rockers plus all the additional labor to do it. So that being said let's talk about how to change this belt. Now there's a couple of ways to go about this and typically what I end up doing is having to pull apart the front end of the vehicle to make it easier to get to the belt. The main thing that's the hold up here when you're doing this belt is that you need to get down in. The belt is underneath this cover right here. So if we take a look down here we'll see. So now looking in between the time belt cover and the cooling fan you'll see I have a rather large crescent wrench down here on the fan nut. So this is a big nut that holds the uh, fan clutch to this idler. So the problem is, it's difficult to get down in here. It's a pretty large size, and you have to hold it somehow. If you try to turn it, it'll just end up either sliding on the belt or turning the belt itself. So what you can do is there's some specific tools to, to do this job, but if you're like me, you don't have them. So what I end up doing is putting this large crescent on the uh, fan nut there, and then down here, there's a couple of holes. You can see one right here. Let's see, there's another one right there. So these holes, um, you can stick a 13 millimeter not deep socket on into them. And there is a bolt back here. So there's one here and one here. An additional one further on down in there that you can't really see right now. Anyways, it's kind of hiding out down here right about there. Yeah. So what you can do is put a socket on there, use that to hold the idler pulley in place, and then with your other hand you can turn the crescent wrench and break this loose. They're usually on there pretty tight. It's been on for about 100,000 miles. It's tight. It's hard to get off. Um, you can try to get in this way and do it, but you need smaller hands than I have to do this or a specific tool. So as you can see, there's a very limited amount of space to work here. No, that's a little dark, but you can see there's just room enough to kind of slide in a hand. So it's difficult to get down in there and try to get a socket into place, and you'll probably end up dropping it and losing it forever anyway. So even if you can get that off, you still need to get the fan off, the fan shroud off, and then beneath here are the radiator and intercooler, and up on the front the AC condenser and transmission cooler. Now. When I, the way I end up doing this, I'm going to end up pulling all this stuff out and leaving the AC condenser in place so I don't have to discharge the system. But one thing that allows me to do is inspect everything and also clean it out. It's got 100,000 miles of, of build-up stuff in it. And we're starting to see a lot of uh, minor hairline leaks on the intercooler here. You can see the intercooler coming in. So up in the top corner where your hot air is coming into the intercooler, we're starting to see stress cracks forming in the uh, aluminum core of the intercooler. And so typically what will happen is, and this is starting to get some of it too, you can see the oily kind of build up here, a little bit of oil will leak out. So what happens is we're able to pull this out, clean it up real good, and then put a little bit of JB Weld up in that top corner to keep it from uh, having that very minor leak there. So even though it's a little bit more labor to pull all this stuff off if you can't get directly onto this fan uh, clutch, you do get to pull everything out, clean it up, and inspect it, make sure you don't have any other issues. So, that being said, the first step is to pull off the front grill. So, this is pretty easy. It's just held on with these little clips. Basically, go through, pull each one up. And then the front grill just pulls forward and lifts out. And so, we have the front grill off now. Okay, so I've set that front grill off now, and we need to start taking everything else off. So the next step of the procedure is to take off the front bumper assembly. 
Then we'll take off the header panel and lights. And then we'll pull off the upper radiator support. And then we'll start to dig into the intercooler stack. So first up is going to be getting off this bumper. So there's a 10 millimeter bolt here. A 10 millimeter bolt here. We've got some plastic clips down here that just kind of uh, need to be pushed down and then the bumper cover pulled forward. And here, 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 here. And let me re-illustrate those for you standing back. So we have one there, one there, one there, and one there. So you'll need to undo those. And then if we go around into the fender well, you'll see we have a couple of plastic clips right in here and then again down there so these you'll just need to get in with a flat headed screwdriver pull it up and then the whole clip will pull out it's kind of like a reusable rivet and that's all you need to do there there's two of these on each side and again over here we have another and another okay so we're underneath the vehicle now as you can see, here's a tire, there's a radiator, and right up here is a little plastic uh, push tie that'll need to be undone. That just holds the fender liner to the front bumper assembly. And then there's a 10 millimeter bolt here, right underneath the radiator. Another one. Another one over here. And then another plastic push rivet over here. Okay, so now we got the bumper off and sitting down on the ground here. If you felt so inclined, you could leave it just sitting here, but let's go ahead and just pull it out of the way and uh, make a little bit more space for ourselves. So on either side, there's a plug down in here that you'll need to undo. It goes to the, uh, the lights in the bumper. So I've already undone the passenger side, so let's go over. And I'll show you how to undo the driver's side. So there is a clip here. You'll need to slide the red part of it up. And then with the red part of it up, you'll need to push in right here. And then with that pushed in, this plug comes down. So, and now the bumper's all free and ready to come out of the way. Okay, now that we've got the bumper out of the way, we can go ahead and take off the header panel. Holds the uh, headlights and fog lights here. So, this is pretty easy to do. There's a 10 millimeter up here, a 10 millimeter here, another 10 millimeter here, one down here that was underneath the bumper, another down here that was underneath the bumper, and this is nothing, it's just a little locating pin. And all that will pull forward, and we'll have a little bit of wiring we need to undo over here on the driver's side, and that's pretty easy. Okay, so you can see my header panel's all free. It's not bolted down anymore. But what I do have left to do are uh, three uh, push pins here. Then another three over here. So when you get those out, those are held on to the... Uh, this rubber uh, ducting that directs air into the intercooler stack. So we'll pull those off and then we'll get that wiring out. Okay, so as you can see I got my header panel off now. It's sitting down here. Just have the grill and everything sitting. So we're going to need to come over here and undo this little bit of wiring. So we'll need to take it and we'll slide the red tab over. Well, easier said than done on this one. All right, red tab over. And then we're going to push down right here and pull the wiring. So that's a two-hand job. So you have to trust that you can actually do it. Okay, and there's our header panel off.